Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own amusement. So, this evening we are doing the third and hopefully final portion of our look at the putative children. And what we've gone through in the past is the first episode, which was on the alleged first pregnancy, the one that took place in the public site. In other words, Nutmeg was out and about, strutting the belly, and uh, the pregnancy was publicly announced, uh, apparently from the very moment it could be seen, which, as we discussed, was the point of Eugenie's wedding, which was approximately two months into the pregnancy. And so that one has the most evidence, the most uh, public awareness, of the most notoriety. For me and what I am doing, it had the most stuff I could sort of glom on to, to look at, to take part. So on the second uh, installment of this, and that was part two last Sunday, we took a look at the second alleged pregnancy, as well as the alleged miscarriage and the first alleged birth. Uh, oh, and slightly the second alleged birth, there's still very little information on that. So what we're going to take a look at this evening is the aftermath, the alleged children. So when we come back. So before we get started, I do want to say and, and just acknowledge the comments from last Sunday night's video when we dealt with things like the miscarriage, allegedly, the childbirth, again, allegedly. We got some fabulous comments from people who were maternity nurses, neonatal nurses, just women who had their own experiences with pregnancy, with childbirth, with miscarriages, writing in and just saying, you know what? It couldn't have gone down that way. That's just not how it's done. So I have to say, and I say this all the time, our best indicator of what's going on with Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet is our own common sense. That little voice in the back of your head that says, hey, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense to me. Always, that's never gonna lead you astray. So, on to the putative children. Well, first of all, we have no more than a handful of pictures. We have some video footage that came from the Netflix docudrama, which of course was totally staged. It's very important that we never lose sight of the fact that Nutmeg was not only an actress you know, in her own way, but that her father, the man who raised her, the person she was probably closest to for the first 18, 20 years of her life was an award-winning lighting director. So this is a person who grew up knowing how to frame a shot to best show it off to the public, who knew how to light, which side looks best, how to throw these images out in the best possible way. Now, one of the problems with the footage that we had available from the Netflix docudrama 
is that in most cases, we have absolutely no idea who was photographing that. It could have been Doria with a cell phone. It could have been a professional film crew. Knowing Nutmeg, probably the latter, simply because that's how she rolls. So we have to be very cautious when we are looking at images thrown out to the public by Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet. These are carefully curated, and we can't lose sight of that. So we have some images of the putative child, Archie, and we're going to start with that, because some of these images are, well, when we look at them just as people looking at pictures and follow the progression of the alleged child from infancy into toddlerhood. At this point, uh, the child was born, allegedly, in early May of 2019. We are now, at this point, we are in November of 2023. So the child would be ostensibly about four and a half years old. And so we've had a period of time to look at photographs. And the interesting thing that is coming out now is that people are questioning, are, is this the same child all along the way? Is this a different child at age four than it was at, say, six months, eight months, 18 months even? I have to say that I can't tell it is the same child. When I look at the photographs of the child as an infant, I can see a resemblance between the child in various photographs. However, looking at the child three, four years later, I'm really not seeing a resemblance between the child that is being presented today and the child that was being presented uh, two years ago. I can't see it. Now, here's the thing. People often say, but kids change so much. The sock puppet very foolishly said that. And here's the thing. I, I do want the opportunity to clear that up. When the sock puppet spoke, uh, when they allegedly presented the child to the world, many people have said, by the way, that was a doll and not a sleeping baby. I cannot confirm or, or deny that. From my own observations, I cannot tell if that was a real infant or a doll. And I, I say this as a doll expert, simply holding an infant and holding a doll and with no movement, either on, on the part of the alleged child or the person holding the child. It's like that. It's like a still photograph, and there, there is no information to be gleaned from that one way or the other. Nevertheless, back to the point. Uh, the sock puppet had allegedly said that children change, that, or that this baby changed past tense so much over the last two weeks. He didn't say that. Now, here's where my blindness is actually an advantage. I listened to that very closely. All he said was, I'm told babies change so much over a couple of weeks. It was a stupid non sequitur, but he's a stupid sock puppet. So really, what do you expect? He did not actually say that baby had changed over two weeks. And people who are hearing that misheard it. I'm sorry, you misheard it. And, you know, this, like I said, this is where you need to defer to me because, yeah, I miss see stuff all the time, like all the time, but I don't mishear things. And he didn't say what they say he said. So that's just one of those I'm playing the blindness card on this one. If you want to know what's actually been said on a recording, 
go to somebody who's blind because we are going to know. All right. Anyway, it, it was a dumb thing to say. It created a lot of controversy. I don't believe it was anything more than just, you know, the sock puppet being an idiot. Oh, oh. Why do we expect anything else at this point? So we're going to set that aside. I am absolutely convinced. Uh, and believe me, you have to go a long way to unconvince me from this. But the fact is, she did use a doll on at least one occasion. And she was caught red-handed. And she just bluffed it out. They threatened to sue over that doll. And that, in fact, brought two PAP agencies to their knees financially because of their out-of-court settlement. I'm sorry. One, they did not go to trial. Two, I could not have been on that jury. It would have happened in Canada. And not being a Canadian, no, I don't think they would have let me. Believe me, if I were Canadian and it had gone to trial, I'd have moved just on the off chance of being on that jury because there was no case there because there was no baby there, period. So we know. We know, at least in my mind, as a point of absolute uncontrovertible fact that Nutmeg has presented a doll as her baby. Look, this is my baby. This lovely piece of vinyl. The truth is I've known people who've done that, but they haven't been well upstairs. And, well, maybe that explains a lot. We have seen pictures, pictures of a child that looks similar from one period to another over a period of, of months. And now we're looking at a four-year-old and that four-year-old does not resemble the, the baby we saw uh, a year, two years earlier. People say babies changed. That's how I got off on this, but not that much. And what a child looks like at four is usually clearly related to what that child looked like at two. Um, the fact is, it's pretty easy for people to pick a child out of a lineup some two or three years after they have last seen that child. You know, ask any grandparent. I don't know. Now, we've looked at this before. Some things are highly suspect to me. One, the children, both of them, allegedly being redheads. I'm not sure if that is reality or thank you, Miss Clairol. Uh, people do dye their children's hair all kinds of weird colors for all kinds of reasons. You know, catch an episode of Toddlers and Tiaras sometime. Look at what they do to their kids. But I also do want to tell you, those of you who have followed my videos for a while know that I very often pink up my hair. It's a shampoo product. It's perfectly safe. Would I put that on a baby's hair? No, I wouldn't personally. But I sure wouldn't call CPS on a mother who did because there's nothing harmful in the product. If it was harmful, I wouldn't be washing my hair with it. So there are products you can put on a child's head that are harmless and will produce red hair. I have a suspicion that this is what Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet did in order to enhance the, the notion that these children were redheads. Uh, that's just, I obviously I can't prove that, but I do believe that was done. I do not know if the child currently being presented as Archie is the same child that has previously been presented as Archie. What I can say is on at least one occasion, the child, in other words, the, the plastic doll,
that was presented as Archie is clearly not the same as the child, which is alive and moving, that they are currently presenting. That alone raises so many red flags. Anyone who is willing to substitute a doll for their baby, well, will they substitute a child actor for their baby? Will they, will they do, you know, uh, this sort of bait and switch? This is my kid. No, wait, it's this one. Um, he doesn't look li enough like his dad, so let's dye his hair red, sure. It's even worse with the child Lilibet because there are even fewer photographs of this one, fewer video images, and we do have this rather famous birthday photo. Again, Nissan Harriman, the same person who took the photos of Nutmeg's alleged pregnancy with this one and photoshopped them uh, and admitted to photoshopping them, but only after he was kind of caught red-handed. Uh, you know, when, when he had no way to worm his way out of it. Yeah, like, no, fake that one. So we know he's faked photographs. What else do we know? We have had a few pictures of Nutmeg holding the baby, a few pictures of the sock puppet of Doria. There are statements from people who have allegedly been in the presence of these children, but in terms of any real public awareness, in terms of the sort of thing that your average person with no vested interest in promoting a certain agenda or a, a history that may not be accurate, we've, we've never heard from them. Why? Because the children have not been exposed to family members other than Doria over the last, you know, four and a half years for uh, Archie and two and a half years for Lilibet. They have not been seen by aunts, uncles, cousins, family, friends, etc., on that sort of close to daily basis that most children are seen. No. We don't even have stories from neighbors. So on the one hand, these children are very carefully kept under wraps. On the other hand, when they do come out, there are questions. So let's take a look at some of the questions. Uh, the Cut interview, which came out uh, 2022, I believe it was August of 2022. I'll put that in the video notes. The Cut interview stated that Nutmeg went to get her son at preschool. And this is that whole ridiculous here, send the bodyguard out to give the homeless person a backpack full of food. Oh, uh, I, that was just so over the top. It's like, obviously it was staged incredibly over the top. Just, you just gotta wonder. Here's the thing. If Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet are correct in their assertions that they are hounded by the paparazzi who are just desperate to get any kind of picture of them, and they are dropping a three-year-old off at a preschool every day and picking that child up every day, the paparazzi are going to find out where the kid is going to school, what the schedule is, and they are, in fact, going to be able to get a boatload of pictures if they truly are stalking these two as these two claim they are. Now, yes, perhaps they won't get pictures of the children. Perhaps they could get in trouble for that. Nevertheless, you would still have parents showing up twice a day at some preschool somewhere in Los Angeles, you know, paparazzi wonderland. This is sort of their native habitat. No, this would have been photographed and, and absolutely 
this information would have been thrown out to the public. If for no other reason than one of the teachers or one of the other parents of a child in that preschool would have blabbed. You just can't keep that sort of thing secret if, in fact, you are being stalked and hounded. So I would say, one, they're not being stalked and hounded. Two, is their kid really in a preschool or is this just another one of those setups? You know, drop the kid off at a preschool for a day, you know, a photo op. I, I really do wonder. Little about, again, very different story, far less public exposure for this one. Uh, we, we see almost nothing. And it's really a question of at what point do we need to just shrug and say, I don't know. I don't know. There's not enough evidence. For me, I am hitting the point where not only do I not know, but I don't much care. For the British public, very different story. We've talked about this in the past, and I'm just going to take a minute or two to talk about this now. There have been two occasions, and these are just two that come to my mind, uh, when the British royal family has been so impacted by tragedy that they have had to sort of slink off into the night to find someone to occupy the throne. The white ship disaster is the big one. Uh, that, that led to a time that the British fondly call the anarchy, which tells you how bad these things are. And eventually, at that point, the throne passed through Matilda of England to the Plantagenet kings. And, well, it was the same royal family, I guess, if you consider it was the same mom, but it was a really serious problem with no direct male heir for the throne. They were kind of casting about, and the rulership of the country went to the husband of Matilda. So we cast forward a little in time and let's take a look at the Tudors. And, uh, and this is really unfortunate because of all the people who ever sat on the British throne, the Tudor family by and large were the brightest of the bunch. And I do mean far away, the brightest of the bunch. And it's unfortunate that, you know, that line eventually petered out. By the time we got down to Queen Anne, who, whose efforts to produce an heir to the throne were nothing short of heroic. Uh, they estimate that she had as many as 23, 24 pregnancies, still did not produce a child that lived to adulthood. They had to cast back like I think it was four generations back, no, three generations back, and then four generations forward through a cadet line, which is how the throne goes from Anne, who was a steward, over to George, who was House of Hanover. This has happened to them in the past. When the British say the line of succession could shift in unexpected ways. It is because it's happened before. That's it. It could happen again. That's why this is important, because the throne looks very secure with William and Catherine and their three beautiful children. Yes, but we have no idea what the future holds for those three beautiful children. We don't know. So could that line peter out 
and somebody might find the need to cast backward three generations and forward four generations at some point in the future? Well, yes, there's no question about that. It's happened before. Could it happen again? Obviously. So this is a matter of serious import for the British people. The only thing that's ever really going to resolve this once and for all is DNA testing. And there are plenty of people who say even that isn't going to do it because who knows who fathered the sock puppet. I would have to say that based on Diana's open admission that she was romantically involved with someone else when the sock puppet was nearly an infant, a two, three months old. Well, yeah, I'd say that is open to question. Uh, I am not prepared to say that it's obvious he was such and so's son or whatever because, you know, this one has red hair and that one has red hair. The Plantagenets were loaded with red hair, and we know that. This particular royal family has had red hair going back at least five or six hundred years. That's all there is to it. So what does this mean? I think we all have to decide for ourselves if we feel there is enough reason to accept stories about alleged children that are so blatantly ridiculous and unbelievable, should we then say, yes, these children, despite the craziness of the pregnancy stories and the miscarriage stories and the childbirth stories, oh, but the children are real. I'm not sure we have to do that. In fact, I'm pretty sure we don't have to do that. What I think we are going to have to do is continue to monitor photographs, pay attention, and look at whether or not these alleged children are, in fact, turning into the adults one would expect from those early pictures. That's about all we can do. Now, I do have to say, I want to throw this in simply because it's come up in the past. Um, yes, I have been rather viciously trolled for raising these issues in the past, in particular by Nutmeg's little pet trolls. One of them, in fact, um, had suggested that my interest in figuring out if these children do, in fact, exist, is because I have uh, inappropriate interest in little children. I'm just going to say it that way, because YouTube doesn't like the other bad words. Like, Good heavens, how desperate do you have to be to throw out an allegation like that, uh, given the fact that in terms of personal interest, I got no interest in those kids at all. None. No more interest than I have in anybody else's kid. Well, well, as a doll collector, I have something of a collector's interest in whether or not these little creatures are dolls, are children, are borrowed, are rented, uh, are, are who knows where they came from. Do I believe that these children are who their parents are claiming they are? No. No, I don't. I don't. I started off very much giving them the benefit of the doubt on this. But at this point, no. My opinion has gradually evolved over time. And I would have to say, no. The people who say that Lilibet doesn't exist at all, yeah, I certainly see why. The people who say, well, you know, the child Archie was probably theirs, probably born of a surrogate, maybe, maybe not. I 
I just don't think they have made their case. And the funny thing is, when I say made their case, I mean the same way you or I or one of the neighbors would make their case in terms of coming home with a bouncing bundle of joy. The fact is, most people are not required to prove their new baby is actually their new baby. And the reason for that is most people do not tell one lie after another about the pregnancy, about the childbirth, etc. Most people do not masquerade dolls as their babies. Oh, look, this is my baby. No, honey, that's a piece of plastic. Most people do not attempt to curate, and I'm being polite about that, the, the greater society's access to their children. Within royal families, it's virtually unheard of. So, do they need to make a case? Yes. But it's the same level of case that any one of the neighbors would be making if they brought home a baby. And the fact is, just don't lie, don't create stories, don't bring out a doll and say, look, here's my baby. It's not much of a case. But Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet have not even done that. So I guess, bottom line, because you know, I'm starting to run a little over time on this one. Bottom line, I do not know who those children are. No idea. I do not know how they came into this family. Adoption, surrogacy, maybe they're not even there, maybe they're just hired actors. And the scariest part is I do not know how this will resurface later in terms of their relationship with the British taxpayers. Uh, the only thing I am certain of is that it will. We will be hearing uh, about this again. At some point, we've got two kids that may very well wander back into the UK and say, we are your prince and princess, write us a check. And given who their parents are, do you really expect anything less of them? All right, that's what I have for you today. We are going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out, and we will pick up a new topic on Sunday because I've spent three episodes on this. That's more than enough. And we're going to be back to our project and how to end surviving 2020 videos over the weekend. So in the meantime, have a terrific day. Thank you.